while back we were just discussing with Avnish that what is the role of an analyst at a VC fund, right? Like, what are the skills that you look at when you're recruiting or probably what's their career progression? What could be the exit options and what not? We also talked about participation of women in VC and is there something that needs to be improved there? So we decided to do a session around this. And Avi, I think this has been a perennial topic in all my conversations with my friends and colleagues in the ecosystem or people who want to join the ecosystem. And clearly, right, you have donned like multiple hats throughout your, uh, you know, career. So starting with your Apple job and then doing your masters and then starting your own startup, Bazi, and then of course co-founding Matrix Partners. So I think it'll be, uh, you know, best to listen from the horse's mouth as to what does he feel about so it. So first of all, Nitisha, thank you. I am so happy that you not only raised this topic with me, but you volunteered to say, say that let's do a podcast together. I think it uh, takes a certain level of initiative and I really, really appreciate that. I hope it's useful. I think to your point, uh, we are trying to answer questions for people who are junior VCs, who are thinking about VC, who are currently in VC, but also female participation uh, in VC. So I am very excited to be here and in this kind of a setting and, and, and uh, all of us here together and looking forward to answering whatever you have throw at me. Yes. Really excited for this one. So, for the starters, right, let's talk about what do you think is the role of a junior VC in a fund? So, you know, let's go back to why did we... So, typically, <clears throat> if you look at the US, which is where the venture capital industry kind of started, it's a very top-down industry. They never used to be analysts, associates, until very recently, if you ask me, it's always been partner-driven, okay? What is the, if you look at the last few years, you've been here a few months, what is the average age of a founder that you interact with? Probably somewhere between 24 to 27. What is the average age of the VCs, partners in a VCs? Do so you really want to say, <laughs> there, there, say it out? Therein, <laughs> therein lies the answer. Therein lies the answer. So, increasingly, it is... And by the way, now also there is a dichotomy. There is a set of experienced founders, maybe my age, somewhere in that cohort, late 30s, 40s. And there is a set of junior, uh, not junior, younger founders, right? And we have to cater to both. And the networks are very different. Also, this is a disruption business, an innovation business. And technology changes very fast. And I'm hazarding a guess that you're on Instagram Reels, you're on Snapchat. I am not. Yeah. So, so one, whether you, if you ultimately see what is a venture capital business, it's about spotting trends and then it's about networking with the founders. We have to do both at both ends of the spectrum of age. Yeah. And therefore, unlike the US, I, and I believe the US and some of these mature VC markets have evolved to this now. That you have to have both. That's how the thought came. This was like maybe four or five years ago. Uh, I remember it came a lot from the IIT. Originally, it used to be a lot of this IIT ecosystem. So IIT Bombay mein network karna hai. Actually, a lot of it was IIT Bombay initially. And now, obviously, thankfully, it has evolved to <laughs> female as well as non-IIT, non-engineering uh, backgrounds. Quite a lot but that. that's where it came. Trends and networks. And both are relevant at different, maybe vintages, ages, whatever you want to call it. Got it. And, and so the core role is, are you abreast of the trends in your cohort? What is happening in your cohort? I'll give you one more example. Like in fintech, credit cards is something that uh, older cohort uses. Younger cohort uses BNPL a lot more, right? So things like this and then network. So I think that's the core, core part of the role. But you've been here now for a while. So what do you think? No, I completely agree with you, Avi. I think analysts definitely bring a fresh perspective to a lot of things, right? I have been in those meetings wherein, like, especially you've called out, ki, uh, Nitisha, how do you feel about this product, right? Like, I think you have been privy to this sector or probably this part of the tech more than me. So I do believe that they, there is a certain level of aggression. I mean, not talking about myself, but like, 
I would want to believe so. There's a certain level of aggression, uh, some hunger, like really go there and like find whatever it is and just do it, right? So uh, I, I do believe that maybe it's with the age factor, it's because it's the first job and it's like a do or die and you just want to make everything out of it. Yeah. But uh, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. That and I think coming back to this perspective, and I know somewhere here we will, we will just go with the flow of our discussion. I know you were going to ask me about one of the books. You know, there's a book <coughs> that I swear by and I know you know, it's called Super Forecaster. Yeah. And the core part of that, Super Forecasters, if you're a Super, so just for everybody's benefit, a Super Forecaster is a person who will have a judgment about the future, which is more accurate than anybody else, yeah. right? And they are not geniuses. There is a certain approach they take. And the approach they take is very open-minded, very outside in, very curious, but very diverse. Yeah. Very diverse point of view, right? And I think that younger, female, non-engineer background, all of this adds to a diverse point of view. So it's for better decision making. Yeah. I think this brings us to my next question, which is actually the recipe of it, right? Like, what does one need to do to crack into the VC ecosystem? So I remember, I think your interview, even when I was interviewing for Matrix, was the most interesting one, including some puzzles also, some role plays across like different different uh, positions that you can have. So just for the benefit of viewers who are currently not in the VC ecosystem, but want to be there someday, what do you really think are the three to four qualities or traits that they need to nail for being able to crack into this world? So. Saloni is sitting over there, so I have to always plug other matrix moments. So there is a matrix moment on intrinsics and extrinsics. And, and I think it would be beneficial for people to listen to it because, because that's where it comes from, right? But I'll tell you the single best definition of a venture capitalist, not of any other investor, of a venture capitalist that I've heard is wide-angled polymath. And you have to unpack each of those uh, words, right? So polymath is somebody who has reasonable amount of knowledge about various fields and wide angle is somebody who has a very wide perspective generally meaning open-minded right so are you born with that or can you acquire that you can acquire that definitely so how would you acquire wide angle how would you acquire polymath kind of skills you are just very very curious you're always learning you're always reading Ultimately, this becomes over a period of time a pattern matching business, okay? I'm sure you've read the Outliers book which is, talks about 10,000 hours, right? You can, if you do the math, 40 hour week times, I don't know, 300 uh, days a year, uh, f f not 300 days, 40 weeks a year, 45 weeks a year that you're working. Typically, if you do the math, that's five, six years. You can do 80 hour week, mm -hmm. it'll be two and a half years. It's as simple as that. So, if you put in a lot of input into the right places, read a lot, try to think about what, what is happening, keep a very open mind. I think you can be, anybody can become a VC. But that's where it turns. Often what happens, and by the way, I, you know that you mentioned I was an entrepreneur. Actually, entrepreneurs often make the worst VCs because they think they know the answer. They have done it before. They are investing in themselves, not in the founder, right? So Was there a learning curve for you? Yeah, yeah. Well? I mean, look at my first five, six investments. <laughs> Actually, don't look at them. So, uh, so that's the so number one trait, insatiable curiosity. Insatiable curiosity. Now, EQ, networking, all of that, it matters. Because we said spot trends and then spot founders and find founders. So networking, EQ, being able to meet people. Now, everybody has a different approach to it, by the way. You don't have to be a back-slapping, uh, you know, rara kind of a networking person. Yeah. You can be a content-first networking person. I know you have had an experience with some of the founders where they reach out to you because they think that you are adding value to them. Yeah. So there are different different formulas, but I would say number one would be of the nine traits that we have in that intrinsics uh, podcast, hunger, hustle, great, all of that. Yes, all of it is required. If there is one thing that differentiates a great investor from a not great investor, it's curiosity. If you talk about Warren Buffett, he still says he reads 
I don't know how many books a year. Yeah. You talk about Charlie Munger, he will say, I'm still learning. So the second thing is this growth mindset. Willingness to learn, willingness to be wrong, which is very hard initially. And especially, by the way, I would love your thought on it. You know, when you are starting out in your career anywhere, you want to be right. You want to show, I figured it out. I knew the answer. My bo if I say I was wrong, my boss will think that I don't know anything about it. I think it's very tough for a younger person to accept, to, to accept that because the reality is you will catch only 20-30% of the good deals. 70-80% of the time you're going to be wrong. If you're not acknowledging that, you're never going to grow. So how do you no. think about that? No, I completely agree. It's just, uh, you know, as a, as a young or an early person into this particular profession, every time there's a message that, okay, you know, this deal met. happened, yeah. met. <laughs> And I, I swear they're like, you know, chills down the spine and I'm like, how could I miss this? I mean, had this just been happening like a week back, <laughs> things would have been so different, right? As if this deal was the thing that was going to, you know, make my life. So I agree. I think that's the case with uh, this 24, 25 year old archetype that we were just talking about. Yeah. Wherein they think that every, uh, you know, the particular deal in isolation that they're seeing yeah. is what makes or breaks. But you know, I will tell you that the best investors, so I think a lot of us, even right, right now at the firm and other firms also, a lot of us operate out of FOMO. And we have to differentiate between FOMO investing and conviction investing. And I think if you read a lot, if you form a point of, you know, we, are thes we want to be thesis more thesis first. first. Yeah. We want to be more network first, right? So if you spend a lot of time really forming a point of view. You, me and uh, Dada have done a deal together. We had a very clear point of view. We moved very fast in that deal, yeah. right? There's another one where we are, maybe didn't have a point of view and we still moved very fast because of FOMO and we are, you know, having, having concerns also, right? So you never know. But the formula here is top-down, thoughtful point of view. Then the less of this thing met, not yeah. met. Yeah. It'll be not met, but I'm clear why not met and and I, I think mean, you take your bets and you'll be happy with yeah, it, right? Yeah, and yeah. And in a deepening market, there's going to be enough going around, right? So we have to find our own 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 formula. So I, I completely agree, right? And like it's been like one year, three months for me at Matrix and I've absolutely loved every bit of it. Uh, be it meeting the founders, forming thesis, spotting the trends, right? And like learning from so many uh, key people in the ecosystem. But like given our discussion earlier, right? Like I, I do think that there are some early hiccups or inhibitions which do trouble uh, me sometime. And when I discussed it with, it with my like, you know, fellow colleagues and other funds, I realized that there's a pattern to it, especially for the uh, early investors in the early stage VCs. So would probably want to, you know, touch upon like one or two uh, sure. points from there and would love to get your views. The biggest problem uh, that I face is around validation, right? The feedback cycle here is so long. How do I know if I'm doing the right work or not, right? A part to it could be like if I did a deal and there's like a good markup to it in whatever next couple of months, then is that a validation? But then that may depend on like bunch of external factors. How does that tell that, you know, I have been doing things in the right way? Or it could be like, you know, how sometimes we say that you focus on the process and if the input is right and the quality of the input is right, then things will automatically happen. So. How do I benchmark my performance? How do I be happy with what I'm doing? So yeah. what's the validation? So first of all, backing up, you said you've been here one year and two, two, three months. So first of all, I want to acknowledge not just you, your entire cohort, uh, Divyanshi, Samar, all the people who joined, Tanvi joined around the same time. Uh, who else joined? Harshit was already there. Rahul, was, Rahul joined, Harshit joined. At that time? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys joined during COVID. Uh, so hats off to you guys because I don't think we met in person uh, until maybe a week recent, back. <laughs> until, until you were a year into it, right? So I think the fact this is one of the hardest times. You have entered a hard business at a very hard time, at the probably the hardest time. So I think you, kudos to all of you guys. Uh, you've done a fantastic job uh, in in navigating this phase, and hopefully we are i don't know if we are done yet but hopefully you know we'll all navigate this safely uh, uh, going forward i think look in terms of validation that was the hardest part for me and you know partly you had asked earlier how do you decide this is the right career what are the ingredients i have been an operator 
And when you are an operator, an entrepreneur, you get results like this. Input, output, input, output. Problem in this business is it's input, 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 input. When is the, you don't know when are the you output. getting the output. And when you get the output, is it the right signal, right? Yeah. How do you separate the signal from the noise? I really struggle with it. Um, you mentioned that you have to focus on process. So I am, you know, Dhoni is probably one of the best captains uh, of the Indian cricket team. He's a process guy. Yeah. I really believe that you focus on the process and the inputs and the output takes care of itself. Uh, but there are markers. So if you look at the VC investing flywheel, let's say it, start, it does start with thesis, point of view, trends. Then it is about networking. Then it is about evaluation. Then it, it is about actually investing and getting into a good company. And then you watch the progress of the company and are you able to help. I think at each stage, there are markers. You are doing B2B, for example. You have made an investment in agri. What is the trend in agri? There is farm laws. There is agri exports. Are we ahead of those trends? That's a marker. If stuff is happening around you where you feel that that means you are potentially behind. I'm saying you meaning the person, right? So networking, I know even in the last uh, year, a lot of times you are telling us about what is happening in your sector externally. That's a marker. If you didn't know, that's a problem, right? So you do get some markers. But the ultimate validation will obviously come with value creation and exit. There are other markers. Tell me, I know that in the last year, there are moments where you have been very excited. And I don't think that is driven by me saying anything positive, which I don't normally do. Uh, or Sudipto, Sudipto saying, what are those moments that excite you? For the simplest of it, like maybe a thesis discussion, right? Like the yeah. Monday catch-ups we have and I'm presenting my point of view after doing like three weeks of work. And when there is like a good Q&A against it and like I'm able to defend my point that this is what I thought it was and I'm, this is what I've been tracking and hence this is the area we want to invest. Yeah. And I get like one approval, yeah. not just approval, I mean like, but you know, one, one buy-in. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The quality of discussion gives me yeah. a high. Yeah. So, I or a differentiated point of view, the fact that somebody is sitting there or people are sitting there and saying, hmm, I didn't know this, let me discuss or debate yeah, with you. Yeah. Right? But, but are we to that point, is it okay, so for the first seven, eight months, right, like there were two, three theses that I worked on and the point of views were also like, you know, they were pretty fertile and we had like good discussions around it. But then somehow we couldn't spot companies around those theses and there was no investment in that particular area. Yeah. Is it okay for you know, uh, the person to be a little frustrated that, you know, we have done so much work, but then where's the investment? Because ultimately, is, is that something that gives you a high? It's always okay for people to be frustrated. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> that's your problem. But So let me tell you the framework. The framework is, and it's not uh, coined by us, it's the concept of a prepared mind. And I think Axel, maybe Jim Breyer has coined it. So what you're doing with all those uh, thesis is you're preparing your mind. Next time a deal comes and you know right now it's a very hot market. Yeah, yeah. If you have a prepared mind today every time you have to move very fast our competitors are moving this that if you have a prepared mind you make a better Someone. decision on that investment. That I agree. That's when you will get the validation. Yeah. Is it natural to be frustrated? Absolutely. And is it okay to be frustrated? Yes. Because the reality is all of us are achievers. We are all used to getting results and this and that, so, so it's normal. It takes some time to realize, once you do a few deals in focus sectors, it takes some time to realize that, oh wow, I had a prepared mind in this, and so we could move so fast. Therefore, we, and the other thing I would say is don't just wait for validation in your own sectors, in your own deals. Around you, you will see that I just saw Sartak walk in and out, right? We had a thesis on checkout. We met a few companies in that space. We didn't like them, but we had a prepared mind. We saw go quick. We were we the first ones to. Yeah. So you can see that the process works. And so my only advice and input to others is don't just wait for results for yourself. Yeah. You can see it working around, around you and say, then you trust that it will happen at some point. Got right? it. No, that's a very fair point. Yeah. 
but coming back to validation so you said the thesis stuff excited you when you had a good discussion there's something else which was externally which i know that that validation meant a lot to you of course i mean uh, when there was so much of pull right like when people were reaching out to me that hey Who's heard people? that the founders, founders. I mean, that's the uh, the the, the, ultimate the, the ultimate level of happiness that I can get, right? Like founders are reaching out and they are like, heard that you're working on this, or like, you know, what have you learned uh, from this particular thing? Anything that can be helpful for us. And then there's like a, a continuous catch up that keeps on happening every yeah. two weeks. And yeah. I think that there's so much value that I can add to them. Yeah, yeah. And then it's and by the way, on a separate note, which I know was somewhere in the questions, I actually believe we are living in a very special time. If 20 years ago, where you were five, six years old, if 20 years ago or 30 years ago, somebody said that, hey, I'm going to be, I'm going to give you an opportunity where you will interact with Mr. Birla, uh, Mr. Tata, Mr. Ambani, Mr. Mahindra, so on and so forth. The, the industrialists of the time, and you will be interacting with them, you'll be chatting with them, you'll be doing all of this stuff. You would pay to get that job. Yeah, exactly. So this is that job. Yeah. This is that yeah. role where these people that you're talking, who are reaching out to you, these are the digital industrialists. People in our portfolio and outside, whether it's a Bhavesh, Ashish, Jitain, I mean, uh, Dipinder, there's so many of them. 10 years from now, we will look back and we will say, we were there when these Indeed. people were building the country digitally. We are lucky and privileged that and the and therefore that's the validation that matters to me no, also. I agree. when these founders these kind of so at every level the ultimate validation is we are in a very special privileged situation where we are working alongside people who are building the nation digitally yeah. right also look at how it's transforming our daily lives zomato swiggy ola ola electric uh, <laughs> hopefully country delight you know these are becoming things that we are starting to consume. The vitals. And by the way, in B2B, what that, that uh, B2B investment, the agri investment, after farm laws, it's changing the country. It's providing market access. So I think it's just a massive privilege and we are all very lucky. And the next decade and decade and a half um, is going to transform the country and we'll be, we'll be able to say that we were there. It was happening. No, that's that's completely true, Avi. And thank you so much. Actually, that point made a lot of sense, right? That your validation should not be just restricted to the markups and the material facts, right? There's just so much more to it. Yeah. Uh, which gives you that aha moment. And actually, now that I recall, there there were a lot. So I completely agree with that. On on uh, like the same point of inhibitions, right? There's this other thing also which I feel that the like of course the role is very unstructured. So how much time do you spend on like meeting founders versus working for portfolio companies versus meeting the right nodes? Because you may end up working like 20 hours a day and you may get like nothing out of it. And sometimes just like a very random meeting, uh, say with like an old school friend of yours might just get the portfolio, the crucial hire that they were looking for, right? So there's just so much luck, I mean, for a better word, probably serendipity, right? Yeah. There's just so much of it. So. How do you manage your time? I, I mean, like for people who just get into the system that's just so lost, where do we yeah, spend time? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to make two, three points there. It is very easy in this business to confuse activity with productivity. Yeah. You know, there is that, uh, that rocking horse, which is, and people, there's a saying which says motion is not progress. You yeah. can keep going up and down, but you're same in the point. same place, yeah. right? Uh, it is very easy in this business to fall into that trap, okay? Uh, GV of Sequoia actually had put out a blog post that I really liked and I agree with that concept, which is about, I believe that you create serendipity. I believe that you create luck. The question is, how do you, and I think I forget exactly how he had put it, but it was something about you have to increase the surface area. Ultimately, you have to catch luck, but you have to be kind of increasing that surface area to catch it. And increasing that, so the way I think about it is be very careful about not being busy all the time. Yeah. You should be thinking about, am I increasing my surface area? Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you go to Delhi. Let's say a year from now, you have five portfolio companies. You go to Delhi. You meet those portfolio company founders, you come back. You've been very busy. 
you have an increased your surface area. You've met people you already know. Increasing surface area is putting yourself in new More, situations, yeah. meeting new people, reading about new things. So I really like this concept of, and I think that's where serendipity comes. So I would say, what is that filter to keep in mind? It is borrowing from GV's framework. Are you increasing your surface area? See. Or are you just doing the same thing repeatedly? And I think that's where the balance comes. As a firm, we are trying to evolve to respecting that. Because often, people get measured on hustle, which is such a wrong call. Like, I mean, people think of it that way. It's yeah, not even the yeah, actual but, truth. But as I think, see, the market is evolving. When the market was shallow, you were you had to just hunt in all yeah. places. When the market is deepening, there's so much to there's so much coming your way. You have to pause and focus on what is your edge. Do you understand the sector? Do you understand the founder? Do you have a good network to evaluate? So I think we are also learning and heading in that direction. No, I completely agree. And I think that's going to be my motto for the next bunch of months, to increase the surface area. Um, from, from this survey, I think there's this uh, another point, and this is, the, I think, the most real inhibition that I've uh, faced, which is around founder evaluation, right? And us being like founder first and like, uh, you know, everything is around the founder eval. So would love to get your uh, views on that. Say there's a founder that, a meeting, right? And he's like spent 10,000 hours in the space, super deep uh, in terms of his experience and knowledge of the domain, right? So I could, like generally, people could end up into either of the two buckets. One could be, uh, you know, like this guy is so smart and I probably do not understand this market well enough. And, uh, you know, there could be like an imposter syndrome wherein I'm too anxious about whatever I'm going to say or whatever I'm going to ask and I may end up in a bucket where I, I just don't know what to do about it. Or the other one could be like because of my early bias or whatever my, uh, uh, you know, whatever companies I've met earlier, I'll probably just overlook whatever are the key factors and that will result in a pass of a company which probably was the huge opportunity. So how do you tread between these two things in a very balanced way, right? Because uh, ultimately, so how do you make that decision or the judgment call? And I know that we have like a proper playbook wherein uh, for the first couple of months we were just trained on like how do you get your founder revived right? right? Yeah. But it's, it is just way too complicated. Uh, so when you figure it out, please tell me. <laughs> <laughs> we are, it's it's not a, this business is not a science. It's there an is art, art. Exactly. Yeah, Well, it's somewhere, but we like to call it art. <laughs> but and, and are we the but there is some science to it. Huh? Go ahead first. I, I was just saying that sometimes, you know, it also, uh, it's, it's a factor of your mood also. So say uh, you had like no, a, no, uh, no. <laughs> What I mean is that say you had a good thesis discussion in yeah. the morning, right? Just yeah. drawing an example. Yeah. Yeah. Wherein what you thought yeah. got a buy-in. Yeah. And in your head you are like, okay, you have been able to stop yeah. the right yeah. things and yeah. everything yeah. is going yeah. right. Yeah. And that might just, you know, sink into the meeting also. So I wasn't planning to say this, but actually maybe we should talk about that. See, I have a mental model concept that there are three areas to the brain. There's the lower brain. There's a middle brain and there's a higher brain. Lower brain is technically, by the way, if you do neuroscience, it's called amygdala. That's where your emotion, fight or flight, emotional reaction, it comes. Frontal co cortex, middle brain, planning, action, execution. Higher brain, judgment, thinking. Often, why do people say, I slept over it? Why? Because your higher brain kicked in. Meditation, music, exercise, all of these are tools, vipassana to unlock the higher brain. When you did a good thesis in the morning and you met a founder and you suddenly felt, oh, I get it, your higher brain was at work. This business, a lot of the tools we talk about, thesis, karo, network, karo, ye wo, it's about getting the best part of your brain to work. If all of us could do it all the time, we would all be geniuses. Yeah. It's very, very hard. Yeah. So I don't have an answer to your question. I'm, I still struggle with it. Um, but I will tell you that, I'll tell you what Paul Ferry was the founder of Matrix. When, when I was starting Matrix for India, I asked him, what advice do you have for me? He said, your problem is you're too smart. And you will think that you are right and you will try to be the smartest person. It was the best advice I could get because he was absolutely right. He said, you will try to be the smartest person in the room. Your job is to find the smartest person in the room and invest in them, not be the smartest person in the room. That's our job. So our job is not to, they have 10,000 hours, our job is to get that 
50, 60, 70 percent of knowledge where we are smart enough to ask the right questions that we can spot that genius. We don't have to be the genius. That's where the gap is sometimes. When we do thesis, it is not to form a view ki kya we, we can't make that future happen. It is to be able to ask the right questions right question. yeah. so that that person, suddenly we realize, oh wow, this person gets it. So I think that's mota moti the answer. When we are not able to do it is when we don't know what questions to ask. And I'll give you one, uh, probably the best, uh, uh, you know, point I heard. It, this is from Oprah Winfrey, where, and by the way, I don't know if you guys caught the Royals recent, like a year ago, there was this big, big expose, right? Yeah. Which show was it on? Oprah's show. So the people asked her, why is it that people come on your show and they say things that they have never said ever yeah, in their exactly. life. Do you pay them? Is it all set up? And by the way, it's not set up. It's the right questions. It's the fault. So she said, I, I do two things. One, I make them feel very comfortable. Two, I ask them the question that nobody else asks. You know what that is? Follow up question. What happens is, I have a script here. Actually, I have not followed it. Yeah. You have not followed it yeah. because we are following the train of thought. What happens is we go, smart people, we are all type A's, we are all alpha. We go in, ye puchenge, ye puchenge, ye puchenge, ye puchenge. Mm. You are not, you have to get into that person's brain, not show them your brain, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the difference. So I think the best people are, and which is where curiosity and open-mindedness comes, comes in. They are so good with saying, let me figure out this person's train of thought. Let me not project my train of thought. But you need a starting point. No, you gave me this great list. It was a starting point. This was a kind of a thesis. Yeah, yeah. But at least after that, everything flowed. So you need that starting point. Then I think if you do it well, if you ask the right questions, mota moti, you will get 80% of them figured out. But there is an art to it. We'll still get it wrong. No, that I completely agree. Like, unless you have the right questions to ask to the founder, how do you get the yeah, right answers? Yeah, yeah. Completely agree. But, but following the same train of thoughts, right? Like, I think we talked about what does it take for an analyst to get into a VC? Then what are the success factors? Now, I think everyone is pretty curious to know because in everyone's head, right? There are just some traditional paths that a person can take exit to from VC. Yeah. But from your experience of the uh, past batch of analysts at Matrix, right? Uh, I, I believe and I've heard that they're doing a bunch of amazing things in very, very different areas. Yeah. So how do you think of the different exit options and like... I think it's a great question, Nitisha. And sometimes whether it is uh, friends, kids who are asking me for advice. So first of all, it's very hard to break into VC. So let me not, I, uh, you know, you know the criteria and you know that uh, we will come to female in VC yeah. question. You are here on absolute excellence and your track record of achievement and not based on any, you know, that we are trying to hire women or anything like that. So it's hard to break in. But if you break in, sometimes I get asked that, where do I go from here? You can go anywhere from here. So what, what have we seen in the past? I know you want to do an MBA. So we have seen people go all the way, Harvard. You, you pick the HSW, we have seen them go there. We have had analysts start companies and we have invested in them. We have had analysts get promoted and they are here. We have had analysts go, I was just told that one of our analysts has made 25, 30 crores uh, by joining a company that actually joined Zomato. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, there you go. So I just think you, it is the most wide landscape of opportunities that come. So I think if you can break in, this is a... You can break this, out to any door. An, anywhere. You can go whatever, you can do whatever you want. And it is a, again, going back to what it takes to succeed. It gives you such a wide angled view of the world that I think, I think it sets you up really well for whatever you want to do. No, I think that's very fair. And I think post this, people should not really have those apprehensions that, you know, once you're in VC, probably you can only go for a startup or MBA yeah. or like, where else do you land up, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just the world's open and you can... And also think about the fact that if, if we are saying it's digital nation building, I don't know if we discussed in this one, but we also talk about the fact that trillion and a half, two trillion of market cap is getting created, which is about 60, 70% of India's GDP, GDP today, yeah. right? Mm. Uh, you're getting trained in that you are getting trained in that piece of the economy, you, you should be able to do anything you want.
Fair enough, fair enough. From from this away, I think uh, to the point that we have briefly touched upon in our conversation, uh, but like would love to discuss it in detail. And I've like we have spoken about it earlier, right? Oh no, this is a female we see. <laughs> Yeah, I've been warned. Let's, let's I've been warned to be <laughs> politically correct in this, but you know that no, I no, never no, am. No. They're so. going to be all the honest answers, and I'll make sure that they're all the honest answers. So, uh, Avi, I think everyone knows, right? In the VC ecosystem, probably female representation on an overall basis is not more than five percent. And if, if I have to talk about like senior people, it's literally I can name them right now. Yeah. It's very handful, less than one percent. Yeah. Uh, I cannot blame it on the input pool. at least from the uh, like the colleges that we are picking from or even the consulting or whatever right everywhere the ratio is improving do you think that that is also translating into the vc world as of now if not then why right why the numbers are so poor no so nitisha you and i discussed this in bangalore the other day and i told you you know i have a daughter who is hopefully going to be as driven and achievement oriented as you girls are and and to me i i think of it a little bit differently which is you don't want to be at matrix because we were trying to hire women you want to be at matrix because we were trying to hire the best for the role and you made that cut i'll tell you where we changed our thought process because 4 5 years ago we didn't used to hire from non iit ims then we then i remember having a discussion internally saying why aren't we seeing female candidates but with the filters we were using like five the filters iit filter cuts it not all just iit but uh, females iit mein bhi hai but iit bhi hona chahiye ye bhi hona chahiye wo bhi hona chahiye then it was coming down but then within that you want the topper right so the minute we widened the pool today there are three or four they are all junior admittedly so i think it is but and you know this is the politically incorrect uh, part that i am going to say we are not looking to hire women we are looking to hire the best, best investors ever. and and you and i discuss this you you don't want a quota system not at all <laughs> right? that's the worst line when Because someone will... reaches out we need a women hire yeah. you better not hire yeah yeah but i'm i'm glad that there's vani there's sakshi there's harsha so there are people have done maybe a better job than us but it's not for lack of trying i'll tell you that for at our end we want and by the way i think those firms have also hired basis excellence okay now I actually believe at entry, just look at the pool. the 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 reality is, even in the founders, it's a very small pool. We are looking. I have I have asked you. Tell me how we should do better, and we will come to the second part of it, which is once you have hired, do once you are in a VC, do, you? do things need to be different? I believe so. But at entry, I don't think the person entering should wa wants things to be different because then. you you know that you will come in thinking are this is not purely on excellence and, and your then peers will also and peers judgment. will also and that's that the worst right that's, that's the that's worst. now when i said we are not looking to hire women the we discussed super forecasting earlier i believe diversity of backgrounds diversity of context diversity of opinions makes for better winning teams and therefore women you know non engineering non graduate <laughs> cas all this all this adds to the diversity so it is a very very important objective um like i said it's actually a mandate to so that what we did change was you know that we are looking in the wrong places and we started looking in different places and now we have more and more people coming to your point about seniority why are people not senior some of it is vintage if you were here 5 years ago you would be you would, be. you would have you know mm. become more senior it is also the pool look at the founding companies how many how many female founders but like i said i have a daughter i want her to succeed so i am very clear more has to happen but in my view it's on the second part of it which is once you are here and we were discussing it that day right should there be a different approach to helping female vcs versus male vcs yes because the reality is a male by definition has thousands of role models that they can go to they are not facing some of the issues you and i discussed late night drinking party in delhi is that the approach to networking should there be a different approach to networking absolutely you should not feel compelled to do that 
and there should be a different but i don't know that answer yeah so there has to be so i think that's where we have to do a better job industry has to do a better job ecosystem has to do a better job but i think i think what all uh, women listening to this should know is that absolute commitment to this because we think that it makes for better decisions and for winning and we think that excellence absolute excellence exists if you have to do and you said we will solicit input also i would love to know how we should do things differently and look in other places but i think we are both in agreement that quota system nahi hoga abhi i completely agree that quota system is the worst yeah. i mean just calling it out is like you know it's it's just the worst that yeah. anyone can ever do to a female yeah. applicant right but uh on the point of even lesser representation on senior levels yeah given we know that it's literally like how we call for companies right there's a category creation yeah right yeah. so on a senior board with the women coming there's going to be a category creation yeah do you think that a direct hire there probably would help that person to be able to form the policies because she will be on the board right and hence able to nourish the junior female vc is better yeah and able like you know and create like a way for them to be able to really i think it's a, i don't know the answer nitisha i'll tell you that it's it's been debated and the worry is so when you are when you are deviating from something from a formula when you are taking risk our at least my thought process is do things in a fashion that set people up for success okay if for example we were to do this lateral and they they come into a first of all coming as a female in a industry which doesn't have female into a new industry which they have to learn from scratch and that too in a senior position that too in a senior it's position I, i i i just feel it's too much risk and 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 then i wonder if that doesn't work out well then where does it go right do, do we get so burnt that we won't do it again so i see your point um i don't have a good answer uh, but i'll tell you that that's where the thought process is versus grooming younger people and where i agree with you is if we need better ways of grooming younger female vcs you need to have a we, senior no or we, then we need to learn how to do it you need mentors you need a female who can relate to you and say that i understand these issues and let me and maybe you feel awkward about surfacing them internally and i'll figure it out wo that we have to figure out uh, but for that a lateral hire is the right answer i'm not so sure because if we get that wrong i think i think it will set us back in this goal no, i completely agree that methods can be different yeah. any any particular uh, vc or like any investing organization that you think has done a good job at it globally or in india globally there's a lot there's i forget the name but lately there are actually female uh, run vc funds in the last like two years that have been set up um see uh, i think there there are a bunch of them but see remember again look at the percentage of female founders in the us also it's a, it's it's bigger right That's so, so it's coming and you know i was talking about uh, talking to rupali earlier saying what is your point of view and she's like at home females run the house which i agree they run the budget they i think will be better investors i don't disagree with that yeah, point of view true. so <laughs> i don't disagree with that she said we will lose lesser money than you guys whatever so uh, so i can see that point of view and the point is understood and the push is appreciated but the answers are not clear we are working our way through it so no, i agree <clears throat> at least uh, it's it's amazing to see the vc funds in india actively you know when they are looking for senior positions they are trying to as we were saying broaden the canvas diverse. right maybe let couple of filters go so as to yeah. make sure that at least the sample size is bigger yeah. and then you make decision based on merit yeah of course it has to be merit yeah, based, yeah, right yeah, absolutely but but i completely agree so that avi that brings us uh, to the last section of uh, which our, i i am i have no, no clue no. <laughs> what that section is <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that given this is like the journey of a junior <laughs> vc so we wanted to keep it like fun and full of fire so we're going to do a rapid fire with you okay right and uh, the request is to make the answers quick and yeah. not how generally vcs do after yeah. a lot of thing you i, am, I suck at this because <laughs> anyway i'll try <laughs> but then the questions uh, honestly 
have been framed in a way so that you know people, the younger audience, they can just learn from your experience. Yep. Right. So uh, actually, you answered this in part, but would love to know even uh, beyond that particular name that you took. So the books that every you know young investor or a beginner into investing world should read. So super forecasting we discussed, which is very very tactical. Intelligent investor, which is impossible to read as a book, but you have to skim through it because it gives you the fundamentals of investing. Uh, I believe, like I've said before, that everything comes down to this mental model. And in the mental model, there's a book called Mind Hacking. There's a book called Positivity. Uh, there's a book called, believe it or not, it's called uh, The Thriving Child. Oh, this I don't and The Thriving Child basically talks about how the brain develops. And you realize that the children had the, the best brain, simple brain, which was always higher brain, and we then along the way screw it up, right? Uh, so all these things about the mental models. To me, investing is a judgment business. Yeah. Judgment comes from unlocking the best part of your brain. Anything you can do and read to unlock that is, is what will make best. you a better it's investor. I agree. What would you tell your 25-year-old self uh, to do something differently or probably adopt any trait or let go any trait? Be less intense, uh, which I don't think I, 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 I'll still. Uh, so I have, uh, I would say in the last five, ten years, done what I have, should have done uh, earlier. Because I have just always run too hard uh, and not enjoyed the moment. Like I never enjoy an achievement. I just enjoy the chase. And that is not a good way to live. And that has changed in the last 10 years, is it? I am trying to. Hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I have evolved, but clearly not. And Saloni is also laughing over there. <laughs> you see through the offset. Um, one habit that you adopted as an investor that totally changed the game? Meditation. Um, now, I do meditation in a different way, but again, it is back to higher brain unlocking. I have a... I think almost every work day, uh, there is a routine I follow, which is a one to one and a half hour routine, which includes exercise, prayer, meditation, gratitude, at the end of which, my day is crystal clear to me. What do I need to do? What are the thoughts behind that? So it has just been an unlock of a different level. No, I remember we talked about it, like for some people it's the exercise and the rigor of it, for some people it's just literally doing nothing Yeah. and just walking around yeah. and not observing anything. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's a beautiful, I'm trying to get it into my routine as well, but hopefully someday. Yeah. Uh, one thing that you love yeah. and one thing that you hate about VC. I love the, you know, the digital nation building, the founder, the, I mean, we spoke about all of this. I would pay to do this. Don't tell my investors, but I want to get paid. But I would pay to do this job. I mean, how many times in life I think it is a privilege or you are extremely lucky in life if you can say that I am doing my life's work because then you're not chasing anything else. So that's what I love about VC. What do I, there's very little I hate about it because otherwise I, see, also, and this is a little bit of a separate thought around matrix. If we hate something, we should change it. We should not say, I hate this, I hate. change it, change it in your life, you're in charge, right? Now, what do I hate? It has taken too long to get results, all of that, but it's all changing. I was warned that you're going to dodge this question <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it's being played out. I'm not, I believe that. So, so one by the way, by the way, no, but okay. So one other thought I'm going to leave people with because it's one of the themes of our offsite. It's called founders mi mindset. As you can see, I'm very passionate about it. <laughs> uh, so founders, how do you think founders think differently from others? How are founders different from a manager or an employee? They just want to do something to solve whatever they are seeing. Right? Very, the mind well does put. not stop. So, so, the framework I apply is a manager and employee, they will say, you know, okay, give me a goal, give me resources, I'll do my best to achieve it. A founder will say, I have a goal. I will generate the resources to achieve it. That's the mindset we should all have in life, my view. And therefore, you can't hate something. Change it. 
because if you then you are then you are externalizing right so you think i am dodging but that's how i so what i believe you are a vc with the founder mindset and hence you cannot hate anything well okay <laughs> <laughs> that's how you put it <laughs> but i really believe that it's liberating it's liberating when you start thinking like that it's yeah. owner's mindset whatever right stop whining stop complaining what does mahatma gandhi say be the change that you want be to see be the change the that you want to see the world no yeah. i completely agree i i won't even like uh, say that you dodged it actually this was a very <laughs> good answer <laughs> so um what would you advise if your child tells you that he wants to get into the vc business my my children think this is the worst job they say you work the hardest and everybody else makes money uh what would i advise is the same thing i have uh, so look so there is another podcast which is around this passion skill set opportunity right which is there is a book called ikigai which by the way is the other book people okay. should read yeah. Yeah. uh which is about why japanese people live so long and one of the core parts of that is that they are at, in their ikigai what is the ikigai it is the center of their skill set their passion their opportunity and some meaning and impact in life right that's not what i would tell my children that's what i tell them that you have to find your ikigai if your ikigai happens to be vc that's great but do it for the right reasons why why are you passionate about it do you have the skill set for it are you finding meaning in it right and i think in life if we find which is why i said i feel grateful and privileged that i feel like i'm doing my life's work because i believe it's my ikigai did you find ikigai in vc before you started this or did that happen couple of years into this no it's a great world? question and uh, sudip tok also covered this yesterday so a lot of decisions in my life have not been thought through this was thought through so uh, after i sold bazi after we sold bazi we made some money could have become an entrepreneur technically speaking could have retired not that the money was that much but it was it was beyond the needs right money is the gap between your needs and your means um so i actually didn't know of the concept of ikigai but i did come up with it which is the passion skill set opportunity framework which is what is my passion do i have the skill set is there an opportunity and really the debate became between becoming an entrepreneur again and versus, versus an investor. investor and the reason i picked this was because it was much more horizontal got to interact with very smart people in different fields so it keeps you intellectually very sharp right It's too much or right yeah, yeah so got it and avi this is the last question actually and this has been crowd sourced from a, a lot of people in the other funds and i think they are dying to hear this answer no pressure what but do? okay <laughs> <laughs> so the question is that uh, and i was asked to particularly ask this to you that what do people need to do to get invited to matrix poker parties lose money to us <laughs> <laughs> you will, you will get a lot of invites right now we lose money no but that is excellent we would love to uh, encourage uh, more participation it is a lot of fun i know i know you have made the effort to uh, very quickly learn and you have won money so you're not getting invited again but i think uh, i think it's a it's a great point nitisha it is something that binds the ecosystem together actually so, people have been trying to befriend like especially folks from matrix so that you know when but there is like the answer become friends with the with the people at matrix you'll get invited we should invite these yeah. people who have asked So. Yeah, yeah, getting it from a lot of people. But <laughs> this was really great. Thanks, Avnish. Thank you so much for taking out time and sharing all the insights with us. And thanks, viewers, for tuning in. Thank uh, you, Nitisha. Thank you for doing this. Very free flowing, lovely, lovely interacting, and hopefully it's useful for people. Of course. Thanks for tuning in. For more Matrix Moments episodes, you can head to www.matrixpartners.in/blog. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube for more updates.